<laughs> Narrabri is located on the Newell Highway on the northwest slopes of New South Wales. So today we're out with Tony and Kylie out at their sorghum um, farm. Uh, it's called Junefield, just outside of Narrabri. Beautiful place, the scenery here behind us. This is just absolutely picturesque. Uh, but we're here to talk about all things sorghum. So sorghum is a new thing for me. So Tony, just tell us a little bit about sorghum, uh, what the crop is, what it gets used for. Um, yeah, all things sorghum. Um, yeah, uh, sorghum's a um, summer crop. It's we plant it in mid-September to late October and normally harvest early February. And um, you go through to about March most times, yeah. So you're coming up to harvest time now. We were trying to get the harvest to fit in today, but there was a reason we couldn't harvest today. What was that reason? Yeah, to, to deliver your grain to your grain corps or people who buy your grain, the moisture level's got to be under 13.5%, but yeah, it's still that. Our sorghum's up around about 14.3% moisture still, yeah. Yeah. You, just, you need it under 13.5% moisture to, um, so it stores better, like so it keeps, if you deliver it over that, cook, the grain could go off, yes. Yeah, right. Okay, and you're both involved in harvesting. Tell us the different roles you have when you are harvesting. So Tony's the main man. I'm just the extra half man. <laughs> so, Tony does the harvesting with the header. Um, and then I'm on the chaser bin, which is a tractor and a big bin on wheels. And he'll empty the grain out of the header bin into the chaser bin that chases. Um, and then, then I'll offload that into the trucks for delivery or into the silos here at home, yeah. So we've got some footage here of your silos. How many silos are there? How, how big, how, what's the volume of your silos here? About 155 tonne each. And there's about um, nine silos there. That's a lot of grain and you would fill those up in this harvest? No, no, not quite, no, not it won't quite. fill up this harvest, no. Yeah. Okay. Now, Tony, you were telling me before there's, there's a special way that you need to store the grain in the silo. There's a, a humidifier type thing in there. Just tell us a bit about that and the reason that you have it. Um, yeah, just, we've got aerators on the silo. Um, the aerator is controlled by a humidifier. It, it, it tells a, a computer when it, when's the air temperature the right coolness and dryness and, and, and it tells the air rate when to run and it sucks air into the silo to keep the grain cool and that and that helps prevent um, weevils coming in into the to the sorghum. Yeah. Now weevils, once you get weevils in your sorghum it's a it, it lowers the cost or people just won't accept that grain? Yeah we, we can't deliver um, sorghum with weevils in it to any buyers and that and, and if once we get if we do get some weevils in the, our sorghum in the silos you've got to fum fumigate them with for, for toxins and you've got to seal the silos up and put for toxins in the silo for about 10 days to kill the weevils and then you've got to just let it, the silo air for one or two days before you can deliver it to your buyers yes. afterwards. So there's no residual left that yeah. cleans it all out, the aeration cleans yeah. it all out. Um, tell us what else sorghum gets used for, the, the grain obviously, and what else? Um, yeah, this year most of the sorghum in Australia I think probably go to China I think because they offer them pretty good money. I think they could be using for stock feed out of China plus they also use it to make some alcoholic beverage out in China. I forget the word of it now, but yeah, but in Australia, most of the sorghum probably get used in like for the poultry farms or, or yeah, I think, but or other stock feed end users too, it does, yes. Right. So it's got a variety of different places that it goes. Yeah. Yeah, right. Just that we're waiting for the weather to dry it out so that we can harvest it. So, so we're sort of looking, we're about two weeks sort of over what we hoped by this stage, aren't we? It's just been yeah. a cool start to the season. Back in September, October was a bit cool and wet and sorghum didn't grow as quickly as normal. That's why we're a bit behind this year. Yeah. So the, the soil and the weather conditions really impact how long your harvest uh, or how long the, the crop takes to grow and then to get to harvest. Yeah, the season does, yeah, the temperature and the moisture, what rain events we get, yes, it yeah. determines the length mainly, yeah. The varieties do too, some varieties are more longer maturing than others too, like, yeah. Dry sorghum or dry or irrigated sorghum, so tell us the difference between those two different sorghum. Yeah, there's harvest. dry land and irrigated. Um, dry land sorghum just growing from the rain, from up above and irrigated people put water on it from the river or underground water and yeah, people who grow irrigated sorghum plant the sorghum a lot thicker than drying because you've got the water to water it. 
and it will yield like more because you can water it when you when it needs it. Like yeah, they probably it depends on the season how many times they water it. They could water it three or four times if it's a dry season, I guess. Yeah. And you're dry, so you're waiting for the rain and, and just hoping there's rain at the right time. Yeah. The right amount. Plus, we have a fallow period before you plant it, like. You harvest your wheat in November and then you fallow it right through to September to plant it. You try to store moisture there for, for your dryland soil crop. You keep all the, try to keep all the weeds down to, to, to contain all the moisture in that for, you, for, your, for your following soil crop. Yeah, and that, then you still rely on rain to, to, to get it through too, you do, yeah. Yeah. So we're standing in front of a chaser bin or the chase bin. Tell us how all of that works, Tane. Um, yeah, I suppose the head is be on this side and the head will be stripping the same, be stripping and then the head of the auger comes out from the header and then it dumps into the chaser bin. You probably put two header loads into the chaser bin and once you've done that, the chaser bin operator takes it back to the truck and this auger at the front here folds out and, and then and they empty the chaser bin into the truck and then the truck comes back to these silos here. There's a long auger what goes to the top and the truck just backs back to the, the auger and then tips tips up and tips it into the auger, then he unloads, and then he comes back for the next load. So here we're standing in front of a header, and Tony's just gonna run through how the auger works and how that fits into the chaser. Yeah, just in the, in the cab, while you're still harvesting, you can just hit the button, and the auger just swings out, right angles to the header, and then, then, then you hit another button to operate the, the auger inside it and it unloads into the chaser bin on, on the go, yes. So it's a nice John Deere. How much roughly is one of these worth? This is probably the smallest John Deere you can get. <laughs> um, it's about six hundred thousand dollars. It was, yeah. Six hundred thousand. This is a small farm. Wow. And the, I think the bigger ones could be up to a million these days. Wow. Gosh. So the header. I've never never seen a header up close. How does that work? This is the front. There's a knife here. It just goes back and forwards. And the sorghum plant's here, and the header comes forward and cuts it off here. And, the, and this, the reel flicks it in onto the mat here, and it goes to the centre, and it goes up to the feeder house, and it goes into the into the centre of the header. There's a big rotor goes round and round. It thrashes the, these grains off these heads. You end up with no grain on these heads, and the heads go through, right through the through to the back and come out, and the and the grains go over a sieve. And you've got a big fan blowing air, and the fan blows all this light stuff out, and sorghum falls through the sieve and goes to, to a bottom auger and up to the elevator into, into your box. And then you keep it there until you get a full box, and then you swing your auger out and, and unload it. That's only a bit of sorghum I rubbed out with my hand, yeah. So they also test for like small grain. They have a sieve, I think it's about two mil sieve, and they put the grain on top of the sieve and they sieve it. And, it's, and what falls through it, they call it small grain. And you're only allowed, I could be wrong here, 11% small grain. Mm -hmm. This is about 2%. Plus also they work on test weight too, to, to go different grades of sorghum you have. You have sorghum one and sorghum two. And for, to be sorghum one, you've got to have a test weight above 70, 71. This is about 73, 74 test weight it is. Like, yeah, you get, get go under 71, you get less money for your mm. sorghum. Yeah, plus with the small grain, if you go over 11% screens, you get less money, yeah. So it sounds like this year, you're, you're really hopeful, and with this sort of test year, it sounds like you're right up there with a really good crop. And if the price is right, it'll be a really good year. Yeah, it has, it, things are looking not too bad at the moment. Yeah. That's con that controls if ah, forward right. or backwards this lever does. Um, you know, these, these buttons controls operates your thrasher for the header. This other yellow button operates, puts this into gear, the, the header part into gear. Um, yeah, you've got, got a monitor here, it gives you heaps, heaps, heaps of information about your moisture, grain yield, how fast you're going, how fast the rotor speed is, um, how fast your fan speed is. You've got G GPS steering, you don't have to steer it. Oh. GPS up here, and it steers yourself like, yeah. Wow. You don't have to steer it, yeah. Gosh. Um, 
you, so we've got a base station up there and it sends a signal to the header and you just it steers yourself, yeah. Wow. That's pretty common these days. I think be 90% of the headers would have, have them in these days. So you had, oh, yeah, you had right. Grains all shriveled. Yeah. Rubber, rubber green bugs pierce the grain, and once they pierce, the grain doesn't form. Yeah, right. You just see the difference between a, a good grain and, and, a, and one, one from rubber green. Yeah, yeah, right. The it, mainly just around the edges the rubber green bugs were. That yeah, one here? Yeah, yep. that one, yeah. Just looks different. Yeah. It, mm. And it is spiky sort of stuff, isn't it? I guess you got shorts on, yeah. It's yeah. probably getting a bit dry, the leaf. It's getting a bit hard, because when it's growing, it's not nice dark green and lush it is. Yeah, like, right. yeah. yeah. So how much will be left? Like, it'll get cut about here? Yeah. And the think, yep. So all of that then is cattle food? Yeah. Or, or, while it's green? Yeah, while it's sort of green, yeah. Yeah, right. We would like to thank Tony and Kylie for their time. Next week, we're going to go and look at cotton with Matt Norrie, also in Narrabri. See you next week at Matt Norrie's place. <laughs>